Hey everyone, Dan Viksanovich here for Why I Suck at Guitar. Today, we are going to build on the previous and most fundamental concept of working on your fretting hand, uh, which was, in the previous video, using minimum effort. And if you haven't watched that video, I recommend checking it out since what you'll learn here today won't help nearly as much if you're squeezing the life out of your guitar neck. So, onto the concept that we're gonna talk about in this video, which is balance. Now, most advice I've seen on building fretting hand dexterity falls into two categories. The first is strength, which if you watched the last video on using a minimum effort, I think you will agree is not necessary. We already have all of the strength that we need. And in fact, I believe we overcommit to strength at the expense of focusing on coordination. The second area of advice skips straight to various kinds of exercises, which are fine if you already know how you want to move, how you want to use your muscles to work through the exercises. But if you don't already have that in place, the problem is if you focus on strength and exercises, you might actually be locking in bad technique, things like overexertion, things like strain, things like excess tension, uh, where what we really wanna lock in is ease and coordination. So with all of that in mind, I am going to present balance and not strength as the key to achieving fretting hand dexterity. Now we're gonna cover balance on the fretboard in three different ways today. First will be for single notes, just so you can get the feel of what fretting a note from a balance standpoint feels like and even looks like. Second, for moving from finger to finger on a single string, start to change things, get a little bit more complex. And then finally, for moving from finger to finger across multiple strings. So let's check this out on a guitar neck. Okay, so first things first, what is the optimum balance position for each of your fingers? And again, this is going to change depending on where you are in the neck. It's gonna depend uh, on which fret you're at. It's gonna depend on which string you're on. But you can start to do this simply by placing a finger and just instead of squeezing, which I think a lot of people do, you know, they think that fretting a note is about this kind of pincer thing and it's not, it's about weight. And it's about almost balancing your arm, the weight of your arm on the tip of whatever finger is fretting a note. I mean, I can take my, my thumb and I can take it off of the back of the neck completely. And I can still fret this note because it's more about weight than it is about squeeze. So I can now, and really, you know, how much do you pull? versus how much do you support? You know, support is pushing this way. Uh, pull would be just kind of letting your, letting your arm drop uh, backwards almost and, and pulling into the fretboard. So there is, there is a balance for each finger. So experiment with, experiment with that and remember to bear in mind what was in the last video, which is minimum effort, because the balance is going to change depending on how much strength and tension you are using. And if you're using more than minimum tension, or I should say much more than minimum tension, you know, I don't, I don't want to send anyone down the rabbit hole of, of trying to get to the absolute minimum tension for every note that, that they ever play. But it's about using, being more towards the minimum tension side than it is towards the maximum tension side. And so, you know, for, for different areas on the neck, what does it feel like to, to achieve that balance, to be able to move the rest of your fingers? Because we don't just play one note at a time. We wanna play lines, we wanna play chords, we need to change chords. And so achieving this feeling without adding in the complexity of some difficult passage that you're trying to play or some different chord that you're trying to play. This is the bedrock upon which you will build the rest of your 
fretting hand technique. And it's not something we're going to do on a metronome. And it's not something that we're going to try to push from a speed standpoint. If we can achieve ease, ease is, ease is not that hard to speed up. If we, and, and, and there will be a point where I will say, yes, go to the other side of this and try to, you know, create a chunk of, of notes and play them real fast. We're not there yet, especially if we're trying to overcome years of excess tension. You can't, you can't get there from excess tension. You have to untie those knots first and you have to replace the the feeling of playing with tons of tension which has become the norm for you you have to replace that with the feeling of playing with this balance and this ease and depending on which finger you are on you might notice your elbow moving you might notice rotation at the elbow changing now once you've played around with this for a while as I said, we don't just sit around playing single notes. We want to move around the fretboard. We have one, three, four patterns and one, two, four patterns and, you know, pentatonic two note per string patterns. How do we, how do we take the next step? Well, getting from finger to finger is a matter of balance transfer. And so now we need to start to compromise. So for example, you know, if my, if my optimum balance point for my first finger is here and then for you know I feel like the optimum balance point for my third finger is here then to get from note to note something's got to give either I need to change my balance point for each note which when you play really slowly you can do but if you want to increase dexterity in my mind each finger by itself is a point. It's just a pencil dot. But when you start going from finger to finger, it becomes a line. And so how do you make a compromise so that maybe each of the fingers is not in its optimum position from a balance standpoint, but you can get from one finger to the other without upsetting or drastically changing the balance of your entire arm of your hand because what we're really after here is being able to move around the fretboard without diving around and i think what you will notice if you go back and look at your high tension playing or your uncoordinated playing that you know the the things that are hard for you are hard because the balance of your arm keeps shifting it shifts, and if it shifts fast enough, your body is going to automatically try to compensate. And that's where, that's where the claw crops up. So in this, in, you know, in the simplest connecting the dots examples, we have, you know, the first and second finger. And how do we go back and forth between the first and second finger with minimum effort? And also by putting our fretting hand in a position where we don't have to drastically alter the balance to get from one to the other, and then one and three, and then one and four, and then one, two and four, and then one, three and four. And obviously you can see where this is going. Two and three, three and four, two and four, two, three and four. There are a number of combinations on a single string. And as you get more comfortable with this, you will notice that everything you play starts to feel easier. The sounds that come out of your amp or out of your guitar, if you play acoustic, will start to be more pleasing because your lines will be more fluid and you will be able to think more about the music that you are making than, am I going to blow a tire and miss this next note? Nobody wants to be thinking about that. <laughs> okay. The last piece of this is going from string to string, because when you move from one string to another, there is also the possibility that your balance point changes. And especially when you are, when you're picking up a finger and putting down another one, and then potentially extending that finger further, then you run the risk of 
getting into this situation where you're diving and you're changing the balance of your, uh, your hand so that you can keep this passage going. And again, the more you do that, the more your body will try to use strength unconsciously to compensate. And so you want to get to the point where you already know what this feels like to go uh, four, three, one, and then four on the second string, for example, because you've mapped out that balance and you know what it feels like. So if going from single notes to multiple notes on a string is going from a point or a series of points to a line connecting those points, going from one string to multiple strings is essentially going from a line to a plane, to a, a shape, a two-dimensional shape. So if I want to play, you know, the fourth finger here on my B string, and then I'm going to come up and play one, three, four, then the thing that I need to focus on specifically for the most part is how do I get from three to one and then to four on this other string? Focusing on, again, on minimum effort and balance. And if you do that, again, you will start to feel, you'll start to be able to feel what playing a specific pattern feels like before you play it. And that is the point where you will start getting to the point where you can't miss because in your, in your mind and your muscle memory, you've already played the passage before your fingers actually do it. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw here today, please like, please share, please comment, please subscribe. And until next time, let's all suck at guitar a little bit less each day.